Previously on Panther 111. The Panther was built and then it was stripped. Its tracks were taken off. Its left tracks, its right tracks, and then even its wheels. All of its wheels were removed. It was stripped, repair, painted. Even its onboard tracks were removed. Here now, you see it being primed. Once it was primed, the base coat was added. A base coat of dark yellow, but it would not end there, no. Then a red-brown color was added. Then on top of that, the insanity continued. Green was then added. And it went on, to finally the whole tank was painted. Base coat completed, now it's time for a wash. The tank was washed, then the oil dot filter was done, and then the oil dot filter was blended. However, tonight on Panther 111, mud, tracks, and dirt. The wheels were painted in a very smart, smart way. First, I'm doing the middle wheels. I'm painting the middle wheels a silver color. Then, after the silver color has been added, as you see it's being done here, I'm gonna switch the size of the diameter of the circle, and then I'm gonna add the base color. It will color the inside of the wheel, but it shall leave the silver highlights and the black tire part. You're about to see it now, look at that. Look how beautiful that is. Now we're gonna do the regular wheels the same way. This time without the metal because the metal is not needed. Again, we're painting the inside of the wheel with the base color, dark yellow. Next comes the wash. Look how nice this wash is spreading. This is the end result of using a semi-gloss uh, coat added after the base coat has been done. Next comes pigments. Time for some dirt on the wheels. Pigment was loosely added but purposely added um, in the wheel. The back wheels got the most mud, the front wheels got the least. Here I'm doing the last two wheels on each side, and you'll see. Now I'm gonna add some pigment fixer. I use this very sparingly because the pigment fixer sometimes leaves a very high gloss finish if you use too much. I find using a brush as opposed to a pipette or uh, whatever you want to call it. Seems to be better. Here they are completed. Now it's time for some speckling. Speckle all around, left, right, up and down. The color that I'm using, I believe, was dark green wash from Ama. Here I'm using the V, what is it, VMS? This is my second time using it. It's a two part system. Here I'm using the first part. It kind of uh, gives the finish of the metal tracks a very flat finish. Here I did not have uh, a small enough tub to put the tracks in, so I had problems with coverage. But I, you know, managed to get by. Now here comes the second part. 
Now, the second part requires you to measure exice, uh, exice, exact precise measurements of uh, the blue stuff, and then you have to add some boiling hot water. Mix it together, throw the tracks in, try to make them fit as much as possible. Let them sit there for a little bit, I think about five minutes. Try to move around the liquid, try to remove some air bubbles. Then once they're done, you take them out, clean them off, and then you try to brush off the residue left from the, um, the bath or the wash. Here you can see all the residue more clearly. Now it's time for some mud. Here again, I'm using pigments. And it's pretty self-explanatory. Enjoy. Now here again, I'm using some pigment fixer. Now here I am using a pipette uh, or pipette. Use it sparingly. Here I am cleaning off the uh, very top parts or the edges of the track, removing the excess pigment. I did not show you though, I did polish the, uh, the cleats. Now comes time for shading, shading the other side of the tracks. What I do is I use the lighter color for the bottom of the track. And as you see here, I'm doing all the lighter color. I'm using the lighter color for uh, the bottom of the tracks. Not being too careful. Then you must blend. You stipple it, stipple like crazy. Stipple like a madman or a mad woman. That's what I'm doing, I'm going crazy. I'm stippling, I'm stumping like, like a madman. I'm out of control. But hopefully, uh, and the next time I do this, I'm gonna use a, sh a shorter brush, a smaller brush to, be have, to have more control. Here I am using the second color. Now I'm using a dark mud color for the top of the track. I usually do five tracks at a time. Sometimes six, sometimes I get crazy and I do 10. Once I do my five, guess what I'm doing again? Some stippling, some stumping. Again, I think in my previous video, I told you the health benefits of doing so. It also helps you grow by an inch. These are proven facts. You can look it up on Facebook. Now comes time for some more detailed painting. Now it's time to do the periscopes on the coppola. As you see here, I did not glue the coppola on purpose. So it would be easier for me to, you know, paint the periscopes. The video pretty much captures how my eyesight is um, when painting this when I'm looking up close. Sometimes it gets very blurry, sometimes it's very clear. It's remarkable how it captured that, how it just knew. Now it's time to glue the coppola back to the turret. We're talking progress now. Now real progress is being made. The end is getting near. It's the most exciting time in building a model. Using the same color that I use for the periscopes, I'm going to paint other details such as the bow machine gun, the shell impact hole, and then last but not least, I have to paint the uh, antenna base. Now I'm adding a black brown mix of oil paint around the perimeter of the impact shell. Well, the impact hole from an, uh, I guess, AP shell. Now I'm going to stump it, stiple it, stump it like crazy, try to blend it as best as possible. Now it comes time for adding some rust for that set hole. Now it comes time to add some shiny metal, really makes it pop. I don't know if you know this, but I did not invent this. This I borrowed from one of Uncle Night Shift's videos.
Now it's time for some grass. You know, grass here is uh, legal now in New York, just to be clear. Now we're moving some grass that I don't want. Now I have to use the sanding uh, gravel glue. This I'm also going to use, trying to use sparingly as much as possible. Because from what I understand, it leaves uh, a nasty little finish if you use too much. I believe the turnip looked a little too clean. So now I'm adding some uh, dark brown oil paint. Painting on the turret directly from the tube. Now I'm blending it with the dry brush first. That's to extend the lines as much as possible. Now with a moisture brush, I'm gonna to try to blend it in as nicely as possible. And that's how it looks when it's completed. Well, here's how the tank looks. Now that it's done, I'm calling this finished. No more with my Panther 3. I loved it, but now it's time to move on. Thank you for watching the video. If you like what you see, please click like. If you want to see more, please subscribe. If you have anything good to say or anything bad to say, please leave it in the comments. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. And I do read the comments and I do try to get back to as many people as possible. Have a great night. Thanks for watching. Once again, enjoy.